um what uh, I've had enough it's too hot my computer says record high in the temperature bit which is potentially why it's acting like a senile geriatric I don't even know what was the first, like the massive calculator that takes a whole oh now it's working ha lol I don't even care anymore okay let's pretend I have some patience anyway we're gonna speak maybe if I can get through it without dying of sweat it's not a very good introduction for this lady <clears throat> Marjorie Kemp is the subject of uh, today's uh, little look-see and she's a medieval memoirist. Not only that, uh, she's the first recorded instance of an English autobiography. Her notable dates are circa, meaning approximately 1373 to circa, approximately 1438, so 14th to 15th centuries. And uh, if you feel like I'm looking you in the eye enough, it's because I'm reading it from a phone and not from my screen because hashtag reasons. <clears throat> I feel like I need to start it. Marjorie Kemp, 1373-ish to 1438-ish. So, in 1934, so that's not too long ago, relatively, uh, a gentleman named Colonel William Butler Bowden uh, he discovered an original manuscript and this was um, amid the uh, more historic volumes in his library in his country house meaning for us he's rich uh, big house um, and when he found it he did suspect that he had in fact um, uncovered again a rare treasure which he had little did he know uh, that the pages uh, that came, you know, that came out of his library would come to be considered as the first autobiography ever written in in the English language. Um, so it was called The Book of Marjorie Kemp. I did have a lovely little uh, picture of the cover, which I will change immediately afterwards. Anyway, it had been lost for centuries at that point, and then it was finally unearthed in the Colonel's family library, um, and it was dictated in the early 15th century to two scribes um, by um, even the signal and a wife of a medieval merchant and she was also the mother because there wasn't any TV then to 14 children so her narrative um, opens with the description of her first difficult pregnancy so she feared basically imminent death at that point she was also gravely ill and she summoned a priest, therefore, to hear her confession, or reconciliation, as it's now known, I guess. Um, the problem was that she felt she hid a deep secret of a sin so atrocious that she was unable to bring herself to confess it. We've all been there. Sorry. Sorry, Marjorie. Okay, so she feared eternal damnation as the result of her unconfessed sin and uh, was overcome by hallucinations. Um, so she had images uh, in her mind's eye, as it were, of fire-breathing devils uh, torturing her night and day. She threatened to commit suicide. Uh, she thrashed around in the bed, um, bit herself and scratched herself so violently that her husband uh, was forced to restrain her to tie her for weeks at a time to the bedposts. And basically, as, as abruptly as all this began, the delusions and the hallucinations, um, Christ appeared to her. And she recounts that he was uh, clad in purple and sat on the edge of her bed and asked her gently, of course, Daughter, why hast thou forsaken me and I forsook never thee? In a uh, more modernised English, that's, um, why have you forsaken me when I never forsook you? Still sounds a bit KGB. But never mind. Anyhow, before she could answer, um, yeah, he ascended into heaven, um, leaving her with a profound sense of peace and joy, as well as um, a desire now to devote her life fully to God. And this was the first of uh, many visions that Marjorie experienced over the course of her lifetime. 
So she considered herself a mystic, first and foremost, as one would. Um, and that was even above her duties as wife and mother. Although she did bear, as I said previously, 14 children. Sorry. Right. Um, after sexual relations with him became abhorrent to her. Uh, she modelled her life after saints like Bridget of Sweden, who we've discussed previously, and other holy women uh, like the anchoress Julian of Norwich, which we will, I, I feel like that's the next lady we're going to look at, um, who lived nearby and whom uh, Marjorie met in person. And that was saying something because that was quite unusual, but you'll find out why another day. Uh, she fasted for days at a stretch, frequently waking at 2 a.m. Um, to walk in darkness, obviously, uh, to church, where she would uh, pray until noon on her knees. That's a little 10-hour uh, stretch if the church was close to her home. And as a daily penance, uh, she wore a hair cloth, um, yeah, like a rough uh, material garment. It was made of goat's hair. Um, and that was beneath her gown. Um, and she hid that even from her husband, um, even when they still shared the same bed. Ingenious as well. Um, she was not a quiet mystic. Her visions prompted her to weep and wail and to fall prostrate to the ground, her arms spread wide in the form of a cross, uh, sobbing basically and roaring is the quote I have here, as she described herself for hours at a time. So her husband was pretty embarrassed uh, by outbursts, I guess we can call them, um, and would often pretend he didn't know her or just slink away to the pub, I'm not joking, to a tavern or inn, is what it says, but it's the same thing. Um, and that was whilst they were travelling, um, until she regained her composure. The public also didn't appreciate her visions most of her contemporaries assumed she was intentionally uh, disturbing the peace, as it were. Um, a biographer of hers, Louise Collins, notes that the public concluded there was a devil in her or else she was putting it on, meaning she was pretending, um, or that she was some sort of heretic. Uh, she ought to be thrown out, arrested, got rid of, is the end of that quote. And as a result, uh, the criticism, the public criticism and the charge of heresy dogged her for much of her life. Bearing in mind she's not like working class as it were, she's the daughter of a mayor, like a parliamentary member. So when she entered uh, middle age, she struck a deal with her husband. Obviously he wasn't taking the first lot of uh, bishop sanctioned chastity too seriously. Um, and he would also give her or grant her permission to travel to Jerusalem. So she departed um, in the winter of 1413 uh, to 14. And whilst the Holy Land was considered the greatest tourist attraction of medieval times, full stop, uh, the trip was also uh, pretty dangerous. Pilgrims were frequently attacked by robbers. And, you know, you can look to uh, Martin Luther's writings on pilgrimages and such, which were around a century later, but no safer, it seems. Um, pilgrims also often succumbed to illness and even death during the months that it took um, to cross, you know, seas and scale mountains and traverse barren deserts, etc. As they basically clutched the back of a donkey and uh, stumbled on foot to reach uh, the final destination. So, as one may imagine, a woman travelling without the protection of her husband, she also faced... Uh, a pretty unique threat of abandonment by her fellow travellers. In short, she, yeah, her constant chatter about religion, her pious refusal to eat meat or to drink wine, and her frequent fainting and prolific tears of devotion basically got on the nerves of everyone around her. Um, and after weeks of friction and uh, patience being tested, the group basically parted ways in Italy, Constance, at the foot of the Alps. And she was left with just one companion who couldn't run fast enough. I'm only teasing. He was a feeble and elderly man whom she paid uh, to accompany her over these mountains. Gosh. It's like having Billy with you. Oh. 
Okay, so anyway, when they finally, these two, decided to uh, descend through the deep rocky ravines, um, they emerged into a village in Italy named, maybe, it looks like Bolzano. Sorry, Italians. Um, yeah, and at this point, her former travelling companions uh, reunited with her, uh, convinced that only God could perform such a miracle and have protected her and the elderly uh, guy whilst making such a um, punishing trip. Either way, uh, she made it to the Holy Land. Uh, sorry about the signal, I'm really sorry. Uh, together with the Pool of Siloam, uh, you know, the miraculous one where the lame man was for years and years, uh, the Mount where Christ delivered his sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, for anyone who's not keeping up, and finally, she went to the Holy Sepulchre, uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where she experienced her most violent and dramatic vision up to that point. Uh, she glimpsed the crucified Christ himself suspended on the cross before her eyes. It was granted this creature to behold so verily his precious, tender body, completely rent and torn with scourges, more full of wounds than ever was a dove house of holes, hanging upon the cross with the crown of thorns upon his head, his blissful hands, his tender feet nailed to the hard tree, the rivers of blood flowing out plenteously from every member, the grisly and grievous but wound in his precious side, shedding out blood and water for her love and salvation. Then she fell down and cried with loud voice, wonderfully turning and twisting her body on every side, spreading her arms abroad as if she should have died and could not keep herself from crying or from these bodily movings for the fire of love that burnt so fervently in her soul with pure pity and compassion, I read. Anyway, while she was uh, weeping and praying aloud, um, which was customary uh, behaviour at the sacred sites, her extreme screaming hysteria um, startled, is a nice way to put it, the pilgrims who were all around her. They'd also had a pretty uh, tough journey. The crying was so loud and so wonderful that it made people astonished she wrote. Later, when she returned to England, the shrill cry accompanied her, first occurring once or twice a month, then once or twice a week, and finally uh, multiple times every day. On one particular day, she screamed 14 times, I read, and she could never anticipate when the piercing sound would burst forth from her mouth. Sometime in the church, sometime in the street, sometime in the chamber, sometime in the field, God would send them for she never knew nor time nor hour when they would come. Right, her violently spiritual outbursts and the fact that she dressed all in white like a nun, despite that she was officially still a married woman, uh, drew the attention of the public and uh, both church and government um, officials. Uh, she wasn't keeping it blue, as we say. She was accused of being a lollard. I love English in England. Lollard. Uh, part of the, mm. sorry, in favour of an emphasis on scripture alone. This is, uh, yeah, this is prior to the Reformation. So en route from a pilgrimage in Spain, so she got about in her dinner hour, um, to her own village of Lynn, uh, she was overcome by an extreme vision in a Leicester church, a place called Leicester, a church in it. So appalled by a dramatic display and leery um, that she might be a heretic, Officials seized her and turned her over to the mayor, who basically lambasted her um, a false strumpet, strumpet, a false lollard, and a false deceiver. A false deceiver, doesn't that make you a truth teller? Anyway, a false deceiver of the people. Uh, he basically threatened to uh, put her into jail, uh, to which she responded, I am as ready, sir, to go to prison for God's love as I am ready to go to church. In the end, neither the court in Leicester nor the abbot of Leicester could find ample evidence to convict her as either a political agitator or a heretic, um, and she was allowed to continue on her way. Still, she couldn't refrain from speaking about her um, God-inspired visions at every available opportunity, as one would, to be fair. Only a few days after the inquiry in Leicester, she was detained again and required to appear at a hearing before the Archbishop of York. Very high up uh, dude. So initially she wasn't um, intimidated or the least bit dismayed um, after all. 
These are the kinds of situations that she reasoned that saints faced throughout their lives. And to be beatified as a saint was her greatest ambition. You notice I didn't introduce her as Saint Marjorie Kim. However, the Archbishop proved to be uh, formidable. And at one point she trembled with fear at the increasingly real possibility of being burned at the stake because we didn't muck around in those days. Um, and that was the standard medieval punishment for heretics. However, she held her ground. Um, and when the Archbishop demanded she swear not to teach or challenge the people in his diocese, she refused. So she's risking her life at this point, stating, No, sir, I shall not swear, for I shall speak of God and reprove those who swear great oaths wherever I go. She also differentiated between uh, speaking and preaching, insisting that she did not engage in preaching because obviously I use but communication and good words and that I will do whilst I live. And that's pretty heavy going uh, language for someone who's literally got death hanging over you. So the Archbishop of York finally released Marjorie, um, but she did continue to endure trials throughout her journey home, even in her home town or village of Lynn um, when she finally returned uh, from this pilgrimage to Spain and it wasn't until the townspeople credited her prayers with saving their town from a devastating fire in 1421 that she began to earn uh, somewhat of a lasting respect of the people and the officials of the village. Right, moving forward. Uh, Marjorie was familiar with the medieval tradition of monks, priests, nuns and other holy people who left a record of their lives as a testament of their faith. So she aspired, of course, to follow in their footsteps, um, bless her, on her way to possible sainthood. I mean, I don't feel like she's really going to have the Pope on line one at this point, but still. Uh, she embarked on a similar project after hearing directly uh, from God that he approved of her writing. Dread you not, daughter, meaning don't be afraid. He who writes pleases me right much. God spoke in medieval English in those days. Um, and this is what she wrote in book one as a direct quote. You should not please me more than you do with your writing. For daughter, by this book, many a man shall be turned to me and believe therein. So it's not clear precisely um, just like her birth and her death dates, actually, when she wrote the book, although we do know that she began it um, long after she returned from the pilgrimages. And the book is divided into two parts. The first two thirds uh, dictated to a scribe who died before it was finished. You remember I said it was dictated to two. So, and the last third was therefore dictated to a priest who was initially reluctant uh, to collaborate with, like, such an infamously troublesome woman. Um, and even after receiving his own vision regarding his role in writing the book, the priest constantly bemoaned the labour, the work that was required to shape the book into like more publishable prose. So he got his own vision, he cracked on, but he still moaned, is what we're basically saying. With the detailed descriptions of her visions and her prayers, the book clearly um, emulates the the insights into the life of a medieval woman, even though she was pretty atypical. Um, and she had the gift of storytelling. And her book brings uh, real world medieval characters from the Archbishop of York to the irascible, it says, traveling companions to her henpecked husband <laughs> to life. Go on, Marge, that's what I say. Anyway, she did not, uh, she didn't, what's the word, achieve her lifetime aspiration. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church, who she was slipping off a little while ago, if you remember, didn't canonise her, unsurprisingly. Therefore, for Roman Catholics, it's like she's not considered a saint. She, oh, the Reformation. I mean, yeah, she's a unofficial saint, let's say. So many contemporary scholars of hers didn't even consider her a mystic. There's always, there's always a few. Um, however, like her story and her, like she and her story remain an important contribution to Christian history. Not because of her status or her mysticism or holiness, but because of her authenticity. She didn't really uh, care too much what people thought. 
which is exactly as it should be. Um, so we may relate to her because she is really real, <laughs> more real than we are, potentially, as in, a, oh, I just love, I love the deal she did with her husband, it's just classic. Um, either way, she's flawed. Um, occasionally she's foolish, uh, which we can all identify with, I hope. Um, and we may therefore see ourselves um, in this remarkable yet average, like relatively average, uh, wife and mother. She wasn't born into nobility. I mean, being a mayor and a, the, the, the clue is in the title House of Commons. She, you know, she wasn't the daughter of someone in the House of Lords, for example. She didn't benefit, therefore, from the privilege of educational wealth. She was illiterate, as we said before. However, she gave it her all um, to listen to and do what she heard uh, from God. That's difficult just in itself, especially when other people don't play along. And that's like really frustrating. Um, so, yeah, technically she isn't a saint. But that's what makes her a bit of a saint in my book. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I'm going to stop. Uh, this is getting irritating already. Either way, I can see your... Yeah, I can see your comments, all right? If anyone's got any quick questions and doesn't want to look at my massive finger scrolling, I'm going to... Actually, let's see if my computer's... Oh, what a joke. Oh, yeah, now it's loaded. Mm. Whatevs. Yeah, any comments, questions, um, <laughs> offers of computers, I'm joking. Then uh, speak now or forever hold your pizza. You right, Dragon? Because, um, you know what I mean? It's very warm for this kind of thing. If you live somewhere cold, I'm temporarily jealous, but only a little bit. God bless you too, thank you. It doesn't matter if you don't have any uh, questions, then that's all right. I may, uh, I may just bounce my uh, my laptop off the floor a few times, see how it likes it, but potentially I won't. But yeah, I may mm, may schedule the next one, and then we can all bite our fingernails until then to see if it just dies. Just saying. I don't know, Bill. Didn't mention them. Didn't mention. I mean, they did well, I guess, just growing up in that house. To be fair. Um, ah, oh, Mr. Brown. Shalom. <laughs> Shalom, I like him. Uh, I've no. It's a reflection, my dear. If you mean that one, I don't know. That's a reflection. Technically, that's a finger, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, I just look directly into it. Other than that, it's clearly my, uh, I don't know what you call it, not aura. My brain's fizzing out of my head. Good question. Thank you. Any further before I just end this torturous stream? But now everything seems to be working on my computer. Just only like a... A short half hour too late and I did start setting it up a half hour early so one can imagine either there's no questions and you're all horrific trolls or I'll come off the thingy again no there's little let's fight it with his little just as it reconnects okay I do have not now gosh no but I do have a piece of writing that I found that I did for one of my I think critical reasoning or no might and I feel like it's probably mirrored <laughs> so, no it's I'm doing this through my phone as opposed to through my computer so one of the ways is mirrored and one isn't so I don't know which way you're looking at it now because I'm not a technician of stuffs um yeah I have a piece on the principle of charity which isn't about donating or feeding poor people it's about debating and it's a philosophical idea you're very welcome Bill it's a philosophical idea that one should always attribute the most sensible uh, interpretation to one's debating opponents or interlocutor I think that's the name for it 
yeah, anyway, you should basically assume that they're sane and rational, and I argued against that. <laughs> so it's only a little 500 wordish piece. So I may do that later. That's it, Martin. So it's on my left now. Right. That means I'm looking at me as I'm as you're seeing me because it looks like it's on my left at the moment. If you see what I mean. Okay. She's waffling. All right, John. Sorry, I didn't say hello. Right. Principle of charity, I guess. Up next. All right. So now let's just see. Let's just test a theory with this awful, awful computer. Oh, I really wanted to just bang it against the wall. It's really naughty. Oh, now everything's working fine. Almost, Tina. Um, I, I, uh, I'm studying at the moment, although it is theology, to be fair. So that does come in really handy for uh, debating, etc. To, to be fair, everything I've ever studied has come up in one form or another. <laughs> including stuff about working with the mentally challenged. It's, a, it's Romans 8.28, God brings all things to the good of those who love him, including, like, all my uh, academic stuff. But, yeah, so, not quite, no. And I have other family responsibilities, but I couldn't afford to because I don't make enough money doing it. But that's not any sort of statement about its uh the its worthwhileness because it's what i promised jesus and i like doing it anyway so that's a good job anywho although i do drink copious amounts of coffee as everyone knows um yes yeah, so allegedly let's not get excited but it seems to be telling me i can uh create a stream oh sorry 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 Ah, oh, shucks. Sorry, one second. I, was it Ivan who just said that? No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. You can put a link in the... Um, massive finger. You can, It's not that big in real life. But, um, yeah, you can put a link if you have any news article or wherever you found that info. If you drop it into the real life uh, comment section, no one else will see it. I don't know if you all see it, but I'll find it in my... Uh, review folder because I don't like links because there's all these weird perverted I don't mm, yeah anywho um yeah do that for me and I'll take a little look see and then what I'm doing is setting setting the next one but you can let me know I mean if this is all far too exciting for you <laughs> I'll leave it till tomorrow thank you Tina um I don't want to, like, uh, I have done. I have done. So, people are not very gracious uh, losers when it comes to stuff like that. But I've, to be honest, like, some of them are inadvertently funny, just maybe because of the grammar and the spelling and the actual meaning when you put in the commas and stuff. But, yeah, it's, um, I don't dwell on that sort of stuff. Um, Tina, right. It does say um, they will hate you, but it doesn't say we have to make them. That's just an added bonus. Right, so I've put it down as private until someone tells me. I don't know. It's pretty um, boiling hot, as it were, for evening time. So, yeah, I could, I could do it right now if anybody wants to hear it. Like I say... And it won't be doing that buffering thing if I go through my computer, which is odd, but true. So, let me know if you want to hear it. Now I have to remember where I found it myself on my computer. Mm, critical. Oops, it was on my OneDrive. Anyway, anyone fancy it or you're all being far too polite to say, no, okay, go away. That's also fine. Surely Mr. Brown would say that. Huh? Maybe there's a delay. Maybe. No way. Uh, everything's going slow on my phone as well. I don't know. But I will just 
not do it if you don't want to hear it. All right, mine. Yeah, you're an angel. All right, so it's 22 now, wherever you are in the world, unless certain parts of Canada where they went on the half hour just to be weirdos. Um, so I shall set it for, because obviously you all want to share the link, nudge, nudge, etc. I'll put it for on the hour, which in real life is 9 p.m. But for some people, it could be morning. Right, so it's public, done, save, that's it. Right now I can give you the link, because, no I can't, because I'm on my phone, what a donut. Uh, it's there on my channel, it's coming up in 20 minutes. Not if you're watching this later, obviously it'll already be there. As long as you're watching it in more than half an hour. Shut up, Kay. Right, sorry to break up your convo, but do you want to go to the other? Up to you. I'm gonna I press the one X because I feel like I'm in the park. That's how I'm doing it. But yeah, you shall see me in reverse very shortly uh, with bookshelf in its uh, rightful place, as it were. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna just sign off really. Big up Marjorie, obviously. A ledge. She just didn't care one bit. <laughs> I just love it. It's just like Tourette's, just go around screaming 14 times a day. Um. I can't see your comment properly, John, because I've pressed the X now, the first X. So ask, you can ask me in the other one if you like. But yeah, I've got to go because I've got to sort out, find my assignment to quickly read out to you all on the principle.